We're on. Good evening. Welcome to the special meeting of the Livonia Public Schools Board of Education, September 28, 2015. Mrs. Bonifield, will you please take the roll? Mr. Centers. Here. Mrs. Jarvis. Here. Mr. Johnson. Here. Mrs. Laura is absent. Mrs. McDonald. Here. Mrs. Bonifield is here. President Burton. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is audience communications. Uh, there does not appear to be anybody in the audience who would like to address the board at this time. Uh, seeing none, we will go on to the next item, which is recess to close session to consider written legal opinion from council. May I have a motion, please? Uh, President Burton. Mrs. McDonald. <clears throat> Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District recess to closed session for consideration of legal opinion from council. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. McDonald, supported by Mr. Johnson. Are there any questions or comments? <coughs> Seeing none, Mrs. Bonifield, will you please take the roll? Mrs. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Centers? Yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mrs. Uh, um, Mrs. Bonifield says yes. President Burton. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. We will be going to recess uh, to confer with council. We will be coming back into open session, I uh, anticipate, uh, for a short period of time, sometime from now. Not sure when that will be. We are now at recess. Thank you. Evening. Thank you very much. Um, good evening. We are pleased this evening to bring forward an option to uh, for a perpetual easement at the existing cell tower at Stevenson High School. And I'll just provide a little bit of background on that for uh, uh, not for the Board of Education because you have that, but uh, for the public this evening and anyone who's listening uh, who maybe hasn't heard us talk about this. Um, we have had several discussions on the possibility of um, I'll use the word cell the uh, cell tower at Stevenson High School. Uh, when we use that language, what we really mean is that we'd be entering into a perpetual easement agreement, which means that the company making the offer, American Tower, would have the option to um, use that cell tower in perpetuity. In exchange for that, they would provide us a one-time cash payment of $900,000. As you know, we started um, talking about this uh, many months ago. Uh, we brought it to the Board of Education to see if they would be interested in um, looking at this uh, agreement. Uh, at that time, you asked us to look at several issues regarding the possibility of selling a cell tower um, and to make sure that it was in the best interest of Livonia Public Schools. Some of those including making sure that it was a good deal that the value that we're bringing forward to the Board of Education today is good value for that property. Um, second of all, the Board of Education had several items that they asked us to include in this uh, perpetual easement that would be beneficial for the school district uh, in the long term. Um, I'm going to, in a minute, turn over the microphone to Mr. Jeremy Motes, our attorney that helped us put this agreement together. But before I do, to talk about some of those specifics, but before I do, I just wanted to mention a couple of things. Um, one is that uh, one of the reasons that we are bringing forward this agreement this evening um, relative to a one-time sale of property as it relates to uh, our budget is that you'll recall when we went out to uh, budget forums last year and talked to the community about some of the options we have in terms of our budget, one of the items that we were repeatedly high on the list of budget items was uh, the ability to make one-time sale of assets, a property, other assets of the school district was high on the list of things that the community thought we would, that they would prefer us to do uh, rather than other areas within the budget such as making choices of larger class sizes or other things. So I'm sure you'll want to talk about that a little bit more, but that was one of the items that was high on the budget list that we did look at the possibility of having other revenue enhancement items in our budget rather than just making cuts. Um, as you know, we do have revenue and one-time revenue in our budget this year relative to that and also to the sale of some vacant property that we have. So this helps us meet our goal that we have in our 2015-16 budget. 
Um, the other thing that we wanted to mention is, uh, did we do due diligence in getting a fair price? Uh, we feel that we did. Uh, we asked Mr. Motes to go back and find someone to give us an independent third party appraisal of the property. And they did feel that the value that uh, we're bringing forward this evening is a fair value. Uh, after that, the board asked us to take one more look at it uh, to see how else we could validate that the, uh, it was a fair deal. And we did ask for some other companies to bid on that, and uh, American Tower was the highest uh, uh, bid or offer that we received on that property. Um, we have had an opportunity to provide to the Board of Education this evening um, the detailed information that we went over with in closed session. This was provided to the board last week, so you, I'm sure you all had an opportunity to take a look at this over the weekend. And um, you've had a, a fair amount of time, I think, to uh, look at the details of this as they're quite a large document and quite a large amount of details. Um, and we have had an opportunity to meet with our attorney in closed session to provide you that. Uh, all the details, I think, in this document that are pertinent and relevant to your ability to come back this evening, uh, have some deliberation, and then decide uh, whether you want to move forward on this or not. So with that, uh, I will ask Mr. Motes to just kind of go over some of those issues in the contract that we feel are uh, important to understand as we move forward and the uh, board makes this decision. Thank you. Good evening, board. Uh, thank you, Ms. Abbey. Uh, again, uh, Jeremy Motes. I'm a member of the law firm of Clark Hill. Uh, and I will piggyback on uh, Ms. Abby's comments with respect to uh, a couple of the uh, terms and conditions of the uh, perpetual easement that you have in front of you tonight. Um, just to reiterate, as Ms. Abby said, this is a perpetual easement, uh, but I wanted to clarify that uh, we aren't selling any property. Um, you are granting an easement uh, for a particular use, a cell tower use, over the finite area that you already currently lease under an existing uh, cell tower lease. So we're just uh, ex uh, not expanding the use. We use the same usage, uh, the cell tower usage. Um, although this is a perpetual easement, the, the, the easement can be terminated um, at any time by the tenant or the individual who's buying, the, the grantee, the person who's buying the easement. Um, so at any time, they could notify the school district, and it can be terminated by them. Also, if they cease to be using the property for the permitted uses for a period of five years or more, uh, the, the easement terminates by its terms. Um, and that would be um, a couple of ways that it can be terminated. Uh, a couple other things uh, that we wanted to make sure that we're in the lease. Uh, currently, a, uh, the school district has the right to place its field lighting for the football field on the cell tower that is uh, there. And so we wanted to make sure that if uh, at any time the easement is terminated, uh, the school district would also have the ability to keep uh, its field lighting there. And so we have negotiated in this document uh, the requirement of the grantee to uh, install a new uh, light pole that would be able to accommodate the school district's field lighting uh, bank for that fourth uh, field lighting bank that uh, lights the football field. So if it does is terminated, they're obligated to put that in um, for you. Um, another uh, key issue that um, we were able to negotiate into the document is if the school district in the future uh, elects to repurpose the Stevenson site um, and use it for a different purpose and wanted to move the maybe the football field or what have you and they have the ability to require uh, the grantee to relocate their cell tower facility to a uh, other area on the property um, the only thing is along with that is the cost would have to be borne uh, by the school district in that regard the last couple um, of, of points uh, is if at any time the grantee desires to increase uh, its footprint of land, uh, they have to come back to you if they want to make their, their actual land size bigger. But for with respect to their equipment that's on the tower, uh, they can uh, expand that equipment if it's uh, no more than 20%, um, which as we, uh, you guys would know, 20% uh, of, of a small amount, it's only a couple feet that they can expand width-wise. They can also increase the height of the tower um, by 20%, provided that it meets uh, structural integrity requirements and also uh, meets any requirements that the city of Livonia would have with respect to cell towers. Um, continuing forward, uh, the school district would still have the ability to access its field lighting as necessary to do general maintenance and also access uh, the area that is uh, subject to the easement for emergency purposes. Uh, and finally, from a liability perspective, the easement document does maintain 
insurance requirements on behalf of the grantee that they have to maintain general liability insurance and also they uh, indemnify the school district with respect to any damages that they do cause. So with that, I think that's a summary of the high level of the, the main points that I know the board was concerned about with respect to this document. If you have any questions, I'm more than happy to take them. Okay, are there questions from the board? Mrs. Sofis, is there anything you'd like to add? A lot has been covered. I'm not sure that there is anything for you to add, but I do not believe there is. We do know that this is an important piece, as, um, as Mrs. Abbey said, of the $1.9 million in revenue enhancement um, proposals uh, that we brought forth as part of the proposed 2015-16 budget. Um, and so we are certainly pleased to have um, a significant portion of that, um, totaling $900,000, um, come forward um, so that we can move forward with the planned budget. And again, it's, it's been stated a few times, but it can't be stated too many times, I don't think, that this, this is in response uh, to a message from our community uh, that when we went out and asked our community in many forums to tell us what is important to you as we're approaching this year's budget and next year's budget, uh, clearly the community said that they would prefer that we do uh, cost uh, or revenue enhancement and cost containment. Uh, and this is a very, very significant revenue enhancement for our budget. This is uh, nearly a million dollars coming into the district. Um, if there are any, are there any other questions or comments from the board? Mr. Johnson. Thank you, President Burton. One of the things that uh, uh, that we have to understand as well, and, and we talked about it a little bit, was is the fact that uh, although this lease can be terminated, um, the nine hundred thousand that we get stays with us. So there's no payback if. <laughs> The lease is terminated in, in any way, shape, or form. So I think that's a real benefit to us because we're getting, we're under lease now uh, on this property. We're getting a certain monthly lease, but if you take that lease payment out over, I think it comes close to 20 years, uh, you get about what we're going to get uh, up front. And we never know what's going to happen in the future. We don't know whether in 5, 10, 15 years that cell tower is going to be used as a cell tower or whether we're even going to have cell phones. Uh, so I, I think this is uh, certainly a good hedge against the future as well as a huge revenue stream. And I want to thank uh, Mr. Motes for all the work that he's put in. Uh, uh, I know that, you know, to put documents like this together and to put an agreement like this together takes a lot of work, and we appreciate it. Thank you. Any other comments from the board? Seeing none, um, Mrs. Bonifield, will you please take the roll? Mrs. Jarvis. Yes. Mr. Sunners? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mrs. Lohr? I'm sorry, Mrs. Lohr is absent. Um, Mrs. McDonald? Yes. Uh, Mrs. Bonifield says yes. President Burton? Yes. Apologize. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again to uh, Mr. Motes from Clark Hill, to our administrative team, to Ms. Abby, who's put a significant amount of work into this over many, many months. This is not just a, a one week or a one month activity. It's been going on for a long time. Uh, thank you to all those who have, put, have uh, played an important part in bringing this important stream into our community. Uh, that is the last item on our agenda. We are now adjourned. Have a nice evening. <laughs>